right. We are live. Hello, Can't everyone. Wait for people to pop in. How's everybody doing today? If you are joining live and you're not from the Full Contour team, pop in the chat. Let us know where you're joining from. So glad to have you guys. Chat is down on bottom in case you're not familiar with Zoom. I think everybody spent a lot of time on Zoom during COVID. So hopefully you guys are familiar. See lots of people join in. Awesome. Pop in the chat. Let us know where you're joining from. Cole and I are excited to be with you guys today. Thank you for taking time out of your busy days to be here. We're so excited to have you. And we are just going to give everybody one or two minutes to join, figure out technology, get situated, grab a, a drink, some popcorn maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Cole will keep us entertained, right, Cole? Yep, I'll do that. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> Awesome. I'm starting to see some familiar names on here. Um, as Michelle said, uh, feel free to chat in, tell us where you're from. You know, while, while people are joining, Cole, um, just wanted to kind of pick your brain. You have a ton of experience with all on X and hybrid. So what do you think is the biggest challenge that labs face when they're trying to offer advanced aesthetic cases? Yeah, I think that that's a great question. Um, one thing I've seen over the years is it's it's a very challenging design, and there's a lot of things that go into it. So finding a, a, a you know a well trained technician that knows and understands not only the analog side but also the digital side is very difficult. So it's it's something that takes years of knowledge to really understand and 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 nail down. And you know, there's different variables involved that are very important as far as, you know, the implant systems, your cantilever lengths, all of the different aspects that go into the design. So it's it's something that we saw a, a big need in the industry to help out our, our lab partners to really, you know, to help them step up the, their offerings and give them that as something that they can provide. Yeah, definitely. We see a lot of people reaching out, just being like, please help. <laughs> yeah. We really want to offer this. We're struggling. So, and, and by offering these advanced aesthetic cases, like your full mouth restorations and your all in X, how, how does that differentiate a lab or set them apart from other labs? Well, I think it really, it really opens them up even like a, you know, a basic crown and bridge lab that's really wanting to expand and offer some of the more challenging cases like an all in X or, or a full arch type of design. It really gives them that a little bit of a competitive edge and we're starting to see more and more uh, cosmetic work coming back. So we're seeing a demand pick up quite a bit and more and more labs are looking for design services just because it takes up a lot of time. And as I mentioned earlier, depending on you know your level of skills for your designers that are in-house, it's something that you really have to dial in and, and spend a lot of time to get them the training needed. So we, you know, it's something that we've put a lot of effort into to get our designers up and going for this so that we can help our partners with this. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the return on investment is so worth it, right? But it is a, it's a heavy lift to, to offer these advanced indications, but we're super excited to dive into it today. I'm, I want this to be really interactive with everyone who's joining. So if you're here, use the Q&A or use the chat, ask questions, pick Cole's brain. Really, um, we're gonna make sure that we have time to go over all of the questions. And I'm gonna um, send out a quick poll as we get started, just to kind of see where you guys are at. And if you're currently offering all on X, um, maybe this is something that you're wanting to offer starting next year, or it's something that you're offering today, but you're just struggling with it. So just wanted to kind of get an idea of where you guys are at before we get started. Awesome. Thanks, Michelle. And yeah, and, and one of the points that Michelle made that I kind of want to um, get into a little bit more detail, if this is something that that maybe you've thought about offering, but you're kind of a little bit, you know, afraid to get into, we are happy to help you guys along the way. I mean, we've done so many of these cases and, and I feel as though we've got the expertise down, not only on, on the design side, but also helping you, you know, find out the, the, the different things you need in order to give us those inputs based on your scans and all the information. So we're happy to help you and, and assist you in the process to, to um, give you this as an opportunity to offer to your, to your customers. Yeah, it looks like it's about, uh, oh, it's changing. It's about 30% of people joining today aren't uh, offering any sort of advanced indications. Um, 
almost 60% are, and then about 13% are, are doing it, but they're struggling, which we hear lots of. And there's a lot of different reasons why labs tend to struggle with, with the advanced indications. And so I'm excited for you guys to hear from Cole today as he goes through um, lots of information. So get a notebook and, and a pencil and be ready. Um, so Cole, why don't you go ahead and share your screen and we'll go ahead and kick things awesome. off. Sounds great. All right, you see my screen okay? Yes, yep. Perfect. So um, the, the, the two things we're really gonna go over today is our Lucid offering and our all in x offering. And kind of as uh, Michelle mentioned before, these are two of our, our high-end offerings that we've gone into a lot of detail in for our, for our designers and really spent a lot of time with training. Um, all of the members of the team that designed both of these indications have years and years of experience. So it's it's something that's been very fun to to build with the team. And yeah, we're really excited to to get into it today. Awesome. Oh, I'm having some. There we go. All right. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Cole. So I'm the director of design quality at Full Contour. Um, I've been a dental technician for a little over 15 years. I started out as a model and dye technician many, many years ago. And, and over the years, I've kind of shifted more towards kind of all areas of the lab, but I've spent probably the last eight years with a, a focus on digital design, mostly inside of Free Shape. And I've been with Full Contour now for almost four years. So um, part of what I do is not only, you know, work towards designing these new indications with our designers, but I also work on creating different design guide uh, profiles and working with our team on uh, protocols to increase our design quality. And my name is Michelle Rosas. I'm the VP of Business Development for Full Contour. I have been with Full, with Full Contour, gosh, that's a mouthful, for about eight years now. I have played a lot of different roles, but at the end of the day, I just help labs in digital workflows and how to grow and scale their dental lab how to implement um, new indications and be successful with that. And it's just a lot of fun. You guys are out there doing some crazy things and it's so fun to be a part of it. Um, and Cole is really just the backbone of Full Contour. He's done an amazing job with managing design quality. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes with making sure that we're training designers and we're hearing customers feedback and preferences and making sure that we're just another designer in your laboratory and we're here to support you guys. So super excited to be a part of this today. Awesome. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah. So just in case you guys aren't familiar with Full Contour by 3Shape, we are 3 Shapes design services team. We have two different design centers. One is in Costa Rica and one is in China. And we do all sorts of different design indications. So if it's you know, crown and bridge, removables, orthodontics, whatever it might be, we want to support you. We have support in the US and in um, Europe. So we support lots of different languages and time zones. You can send in live chats or emails or phone calls. We're here to support you. And as I mentioned, we really want to feel like an extension of somebody in your laboratory. We're a friend, we're a colleague, we're here to help you guys be successful um, and provide great quality products to your dental um, partners. So that's a little bit about Full Contour. And as I mentioned, uh, we have design centers. So that's gonna be dental technicians who do a whole bunch of different indications. So crowns, splints, guided surgery, dentures, clear aligners, all on X. Like basically if it can be designed in 3Shape or ExoCAD, we wanna be able to do the design for you guys. Um, but we have recently launched 3Shape Automate, which is AI powered design, which is just feels like back to the future, right? Like it is so cool to see AI and dentistry and where that's headed. So you can get designs in as quick as five minutes. And what's so awesome about 3Shape Automate is you only pay for the designs that you love. So if you upload a crown or a night guard and you're just not happy with the results, you don't have to pay for it, which is really, really cool. It's also infinitely scalable. So you could upload five crowns or 500 crowns and get them all back in five minutes. So when you think about scale, it's so powerful. And this can really free up your designer's time to focus on those all in X cases or the denture cases or the cases that just take so much time and focus and dedication from your team. Or you can use the extra time to train your team on these new things, right? So think of Automate as a way to grow and scale your lab, but also free up your designer's time to work on 
bigger, more important things than single unit crowns. So I encourage you to check out 3Shape Automate, um, but we're here to serve you with both solutions. And just in case it might be a little bit confusing, Full Contour is 3Shape. So we're 3Shape Design Services and we provide dental technicians or AI design services. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Cole to dive into what we all are here for today, which is advanced indications. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. So I'm going to start off by going through our, our Lucid offering. Um, this was something that one of my first projects when I first started with Full Contour, um, we wanted to create a solution for our customers where we could really um, nail down a, a, a little bit more details when it comes to aesthetics. So one of the things that, that I struggled with when I very first started is we had a lot of customers that would ask for, you know, give us your best designer because I have this large full mouth case and I want it to be perfect. Well, I mean, we can all agree that every technician kind of has their different take and opinion on how a design should be. So that was really the reason why we, we launched this Lucid offering. And as I get into the details on this, you'll see kind of what, we, what we've done to accomplish, you know, bringing excellence with this, with this product. Um, just to start off, there, there are a couple things that we require up front. Um, a lot of the indications that we offer are pretty straightforward. So for example, if you send us a single unit crown um, and you don't really have a whole lot of, of details that need to go into it, um, then it's, it's pretty straightforward. We have our internal defaults or you can also set up your own defaults. But with our Lucid offering, we do require a little bit of, a little more um, information up front. And the reason for that is because we wanna be successful and we wanna be able to provide you with a design that's gonna be exactly what you're looking to achieve. And kind of as Michelle mentioned earlier, we wanna be an extension to you as almost like a, an in-house designer for you. So that's really what we, we tried to capture with everything that we built around this Lucid Design Guide. Um, so we do require a complete three-shape order. It's important for us to know everything that's gonna be contained in that three shape order. So we need to know your materials so that all those standards will be carried over. Um, we need to know what type of manufacturing process it is, everything that's been, that's, that's you're basically creating in a three shape order and you were to do in house, once you have that complete zip file and you either drag and drop it to our platform or you send it through the, the dental system button through full contour, all that information travels with the case. So you don't have to worry about um, your margin line offset or your cement gap or, you know, certain material standards related to manufacturing process, all that will travel with the case. And that's really one of the main reasons why we do require that complete three shape order, because we found in the past that if we try to set up an order for you, um, a lot of the times that doesn't align with however you're planning to manufacture. So it's much easier to make sure everything is streamlined and goes over well. Um, Second to that, we, we ask that you either provide us with the uh, uh, general length of centrals of what you're looking to achieve or a uh, wax up or a pre-op. The reason for that is this just gives us a good starting point for this particular um, design offering so that we can know, you know where our designers will start to make some measurements. Um, they base their design off of the golden Shimbashi ratio. So they'll use that as a guide to kind of, you know, fit the, the um, restoration within the arch to, to come up with, you know, something that's going to have a nice aesthetic look, but also function accurately. From there, once you actually submit the case to the platform, you're going to see that under the Lucid Design Guide, we have several different options related to different categories within the type of design. So it should be uh, built out to where you start off with your three shape library. So you can see here, we have six different options on here but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to choose from one of these six. If you have a library that you've custom made, or if you have any other three shape library that's not shown on here, all you'd have to do is just um, specify that in the instructions. And then we would use that library for, for the design. Um, everything that you see highlighted in green as I go through the different design guide is gonna be the default of what our designers will use if you don't tell us what type of um, anatomy or contacts or whatever whatever the case is related to, to that design guide code. So again, if you were to just submit a case, let's say you submitted a six unit anterior case, um, you wanted us to just take care of it, you weren't sure about uh, what library to use, what line angles to use, all of that, we'll follow our defaults and use our best judgment. But what I really like to try to express in detail is really take the time to go through the guide because you'll notice on here, 
Um, the more time you take to really give us these details, the better outcome. So again, we have uh, several different options for your library. Then we move into our smile styles. This is something that I really highly recommend always doing on all of your cases. Um, we have a lot of users that let's say they, they really like the DES arch form, but they're working on a female patient. So they wanna have something that's a little bit more feminine related to the incisal edges and the embrasures. So in that case, you would choose that DDS arch form library, but then you would wanna go with this SS5 for the incisal edge design. And what that does is our, our designers are gonna use um, that library proposal, try to maintain as much of the anatomy as possible. And really the only thing they're gonna be making adjustments to is are those incisal edges and maybe just slightly opening up those embrasures. Or if they're working on an older patient, for example, you would want to go with something like an SS6 where we'll kind of, you know, add a little bit more of a square incisal edge and close up those embrasures to give it a little bit more of a wear look. So you can see based on, you know, the different codes that we have available, it really gives you the opportunity to fully customize the design and, and really give us these inputs. Um, as, as far as the smile style is related, if there's nothing that's entered for this, then we're just going to maintain whatever the proposed library is. So if you were to say, oh, I want the physio star, then we're going to we're going to keep this as close as possible. We'll, we'll make some minor adjustments as far as, you know, fitting to the space and making sure it's still aesthetic, but we're not going to be changing anything. We don't over smooth or or try to add too much. We, we try to maintain as much of that um, proposed anatomy as possible. So then from there, we get into a couple different options. We have some line angle standards that you can change and also some surface texture. So for example, if we wanted to you know, broaden those line angles and, and give the, the teeth a little bit more of a wider look, then you have the option to enter the LAB on the clickable design guide. Um, surface texture, same type of situation. If you're wanting to maintain the anatomy that's in that proposed library, then of course you would just go with the standard and we, we're not gonna over smooth or add, but you do have some options to, like I said, either narrow those line angles, broaden them, keep them as the standard. Um, and then as far as surface texture, we can go a little bit more detail if wanted, or we can smooth those up if that's something that you would rather, that maybe your ceramist would rather come in there and adjust by themselves towards the end. Um, we still we also have that available for our lingual as well. This is something that I don't see a whole lot, um, but depending on the market, we um, believe it or not, we actually do have quite a few customers that ask for a high detail lingual. So it all just depends. And again, it comes it comes back to personal preference, and that's why we really wanted to apply as much information as possible to give our users the ability to customize. Um, this is another thing that this is more so just something that we do on a default. It's not something that you would have to select in the guide um, by closing the, the lingual embrasure. So this is something we always do just so that we're avoiding any black triangles. Um, so it's more of just a, uh, a message to let you know this is something that we follow as a standard. So if there's anything that you want us to change on this for whatever reason, you would just need to, to specify that. So then we have we get into some details related to midline placement. Um, by default, we're going to follow the, the lower midline or the incisive papilla, but if you do have a pre-op that you want us to follow, or if the patient has an existing diastema that they want to maintain just to keep that characterization that they've had, um, you do have the option to do that. And then also, if you need to move the midline in either direction, we have a code for that where you can enter a value and our designers will follow that for the design of the case. And then lastly, we have this necking option. So this is something that I feel is, is very important. Um, depending on how the doctor prepped the, the uh, patient, we can sometimes have some varying depths in where those margins are placed. So it's, it's not all the time where those preps are gonna be perfect. So we, our team is very well trained to know and understand you know, where they need to place those necks in reference to you know, uh, make that nice and symmetrical. So, by default, they'll do this a little bit on their own, but if you have specific details or you don't want us to do this at all, you can just specify that by using this code, which is on, on the platform in a clickable format. Um, one of the things that we noticed when I very first launched the Lucid offering, 
I noticed um, we, we had a, a lot of users that were loving it. We were seeing a volume increase each month, but then we started getting questions on, well, why don't you have this for posteriors? Well, and the, the main reason is because the, the offering was intended for anteriors, but we got such a, you know, a large number of, of customers asking for posteriors. So we did create a few different codes that you can customize your, your posteriors as well. So we have just kind of some um, level of, of detail and anatomy for our posteriors and then also our embrasure depth. So if you're still wanting to have a nice broad contact, but you want some open embrasures, you have the option to select this enhanced. Um, if you want it to be a little bit more minimal of a, of a space between those embrasures, you have you know, some options as that as well. One thing to keep in mind when it comes to contacts is whatever value you have set for your default or you, you order for your contacts will always maintain that, that numerical value. The only thing that this is going to do is just open up the embrasure. So yeah, the difference between this CES and CEE may look like we have a different value of the, the um, contact itself, but it's really just the embrasure opening. So just something to, to keep in mind on that. And then lastly, this is something that I always really like to show for our Lucid offering. I took a uh, six unit anterior case and had one of our Lucid designers, I basically set it up for them four times with four different outcomes of how um, different customers would order uh, a Lucid case based on various different uh, options in the design guide. So I always like to ask um, in, my, in my webinars or my lectures, everyone that's attending it, what, what's your favorite uh, design here out of these four? We, Hop got into the, the exact chat. Same scan. <laughs> Let we've us got know. We've got the exact same scan, but we have a different outcome based on, on um, what was ordered for the case itself. And I think this is important to show just because over the years with this offering, we've noticed um, kind of, as I mentioned in the beginning, we had users that would just say, give us your best designer. Well, everyone has a little bit of a different opinion. So I've had, I've had multiple people tell me multiple different options for this as their favorite. So it, I'd just like to hear from the, the audience and to see, you know, what, what's your favorite based on these four, you know, some of you may like a little bit more facial anatomy, like you see in number four, or some of you may like a little bit more open embrasures and a feminine look. Um, as you see in number one. So it's just something to really- I'm seeing some number threes so far. Okay, yeah. Anyone else? Like I personally like number two. <laughs> <laughs> and Cole, yeah, you know, I mean... sorry, I just to interrupt, you know, we're so familiar with Lucid and, and the term Lucid, but like, what does that mean for a lab when they order a Lucid case? I mean, I like to, it's funny because when we first launched Lucid, we, we had a hard time figuring out a name for it. I mean, we, we started with premium and then we started with, um, you know, elite and all these different names we were trying to think of, like, how can we, how can we like differentiate this offering from our, just our, our standard, you know, crown and bridge offering. And the, the term Lucid just came to me and I looked up the actual definition and it's, it's expressed clearly or well understood. So uh, that might not be the exact <laughs> definition, but it's very close to that. And I thought it fit this really well because it really, it really gives um, our users, as long as we have the information that we need, I mean, we can be very successful with the design, but I do always like to encourage, take the time to really go through the guide and, um, and fully customize your design because at the end of the day, the last thing you want to do when you come back into the lab the next morning is to have to adjust a, a giant anterior case. But if you can take a little bit of extra time up front and, you know, order exactly what you want, and then you come in and you see it's pretty much perfect where you want it, that's always a, a great feeling. And, and Lucid, again, everyone... Sorry. Go ahead, Michelle. No, Lucid can be ordered on a single unit or mm -hmm. a full mouth case or anything in between. Yep. <laughs> so it, it can really be any crown case that you're you're wanting to do like more high definition or customization yeah and we've actually even recently added a few more different options so for those of you that are already familiar with our our design guide on our platform in the past lucid was we only had the codes just for lucid so just for the anterior 
but I've recently added, just because of all the requests I'm getting, I've added some different cutback codes because believe it or not, we actually have a lot of users that they'll send a full arch case, but they want, you know, six through 11 cut back to a certain point. So I've added those codes in there to give you the ability to still use Lucid with that type of case. So, and yeah. And just in case people aren't familiar with these codes that Cole keeps mentioning, I like to say it's like an order by picture menu, right? Like you go to McDonald's and there's a cheeseburger, but I want to add lettuce and tomato and whatever. And our design guide code is the same. It, you open a menu and it has a bunch of pictures and descriptions of what these things are. And you just simply click the ones that you want for that case. You can set certain codes as favorites. You can create groups. So if you know one doctor likes their smile design this way, you could call it Dr. Bob's smile design, right? Name it whatever you want. And then when you upload Dr. Bob's cases, you just click his preferences, right? And so you can order these cases very easy, but there's so much customization available. Yeah, and I think I think um, over the past few months, we've, we've brought in quite a few different enhancements to our platform to give you the ability to use it to its full extent. So as Michelle mentioned, favorites, defaults, grouping, um, so it really, really makes it easy so that each time you send a case, you can have that already preset or you can customize it per, per order. So it's, it's really nice workflow. All right, I'm going to get, go ahead and move forward into our all on X and, um, all on X prepped hybrid design. So feel free, you guys, if you have any questions on the Lucid offering or, or anything else you want to touch on. Don't hesitate to just um, send it through chat and then we'll, towards the end, we'll go over a QA. and a So we also um, are gonna be covering today our all in X prepped hybrid and our all in X monolithic hybrid. Um, this was uh, another project that, that I did, probably it's been about a year and a half now. Um, and I handpicked uh, a small group of our designers that knew and understood you know, details related to implant um, restorations, and we built this together. So um, I'm very, very proud of, of our team and our designers that helped me um, build this. It's been really, really fun offering to, to go over. So I'm going to start off with our, our standard uh, monolithic design. Again, similar to Lucid, we do need a complete three-shape order. And as most of you know that have done um, any type of implant restoration or, or hybrids all on X in the past, it is extremely important to make sure that your implant kit and system and all that information is accurate because the last thing you want to do is um, set something up wrong in your order and then you know you have this beautiful design that gets milled, centered, and it doesn't fit. So it's just something that that I really if if, if you're struggling with order setup, make sure that you get the help you need. Reach out to your resellers. We can also help on in certain aspects of that too. So. If it's something that, that you're unsure of, just let us know and we'll, we'll be happy to help. Um, number two, gingiva type selection. So there's a couple different ways an order can be set up for a three shape. Uh, most of the monolithic cases we receive, we actually have a um, just full gingiva where um, we don't do a whole lot of cutback, but we do have the option to, if you're planning to stack um, some type of material like gradier or something on that, we can cut that back for you. But just make sure when you create the order, um, you can see over here on the left, depending on what type of gingiva option you choose, you, ma you make that, uh, that selection accordingly. And um, number three, length of centrals or pre-op scan. I would say probably 80% of the cases we receive for all X come with either a pre-op scan or a diagnostic or you know something that at least gives us a reference point so we know what to start from so again as long as we have something of that nature we can move forward with the case and then number four material used for final restoration um this is more of kind of kind of optional because this obviously will travel with the case but um i like to put it on here just in case so that our designers when they when they do the evaluation process of each uh, all on X order. It's important for them to, if they can't see, a lot of the times the three shape material will be named something um, from the lab, like the lab will name it their own zirconia. Um, but our designer doesn't know necessarily know what that material is, but it's important for us to know if it's going to be zirconia or PMMA or, or whatever the case is, just so that we can evaluate it properly. 
So when we get it, when we talk about hybrids, there's so many different vari variables involved. Um, this was something, one of, it's, it's always been one of my favorite types of designs. I, I, I love it because of the challenge and because of, of what you get at the end. And it's just, it's a very um, rewarding thing to see a, an amazing hybrid design at the end. And they just look, they just look cool. I just have to say, you know, so, but there's, there's so many different variables involved. Like we have issues with ridge lapping, tissue concavities, implant location, your screw access holes, your cantilever lengths, um, your bites, your tissue pressure, your vertical clearance, your AP spread. So all of these things here are, are very, very important. And there's so many more aspects that come into it. So when we first launched this, it was very um, important for, for my team to know and understand the importance of all this information. And the reason for that is because each case we receive before we even start the design, we take it through a very in-depth process where we evaluate all these things, we measure the AP spread, make sure that the order matches with what we have available as far as our cantilever lengths. Um, we really focus in on a lot of the details related to, you know, if, we're, if we have concerns on the screw access holes coming out of the facial, well, maybe that's something that we should um, communicate with the customer prior to actually going with the design. Because again, the last thing we want to do is spend a lot of time on a design and we have a screw access hole coming out of, you know, number eight or nine, and then it's, it's not going to be a good outcome. So just some of the things that that we've really honed in on with our team to make sure that they're very well aware of these, of these processes and they evaluate prior to designing the case. If for some reason we have a concern where we have a cantilever length that's extending, you know, three units past the furthest posterior implant, then of course, that's something that we would place on hold and get in touch with you to notify, you know, let's, let's at least either take off one of the posterior units or, or um, rediscuss how we want to approach this case. So I wanted to show again, somewhat similar to the, the Lucid case, how we have two, two orders here, exact same patient, but two different outcomes. Um, you can see the case on the right, we did a gingival cutback so that um, the finisher will have the ability to stack on that and, and kind of add their own characterization. And it also has a little bit more of a feminine look with the rounded incisal edges. And then you can see the, the one on the left, we have a little more detail and texture in the, in the um, surface texture on the facial. So again, guys, it just goes back to, we're really giving you the ability to tell us exactly how you want these designs to come back. Um, when it comes to function and occlusion and you know, excursive movements, Obviously we take, we take care of all of that, but when it comes to the aesthetic part of it, just take the time to really go through the guide and give us exactly what you want. Um, based on these two cases, this is kind of a um, design guide selection order of, what, of typically what you would see on these. So you can see we've got what, uh, about 11 different codes here for each case with various different um, things selected. So if you look at case one, we have the, the masculine incisal edge design versus the SS4 for case two for the youthful. And you can kind of see the difference between the two just by you know, looking at, at where, what we have here in these examples. So this is, you know, as you scroll through the design guide on our platform, these are the type of things that you would see as far as the design guide code, you would make that selection um, prior to, to moving forward with the case. These examples are really just my favorite because we hear so often, we'll just, you know, have your best designer do it. And to your point, Cole, it's like, we could give that same case with all these different codes to the same designer and get so many different outcomes. And so really exactly. we rely on you, the lab to really be the experts in what your doctors are looking for and give us those inputs. And with the correct inputs, it turns out beautifully. Yeah. And, and even if it's something you're not sure of and, and you, you do want us to take, take the wheel and, and, you know, do our best and put our best designer on, we can absolutely do that. But I do always like to encourage you to, to take the time to at least, you know, choose some of the codes, something that you're familiar with, and we can always help with, with the code selections as well. Um, this is another example of something we can do and provide with the case. So if, for example, if you have a provisional try-in that the patient is, that's validated for the bite and phonetics and things like that, um, if you include that image with the case, we can take the, the, the design and align it into this, um, 
real view uh, image to give you kind of a reference of what this could look like for the patient. So this was a case that we did for Jack Morano at Absolute. Um, and this is something we, we typically do for all of their cases whenever we receive one of these images, just to give the patient that, that kind of, you know, reference point that gives them an understanding of what it could like could look like. We also do have a um, 3D virtual smile design offering. This is, this is separate from our Lucid and all x but if it's something that you wanted us to do, um, we can provide this as well. And this is more so for some of you that are probably familiar with this, it's just a 2D overlay. But what we can do is if you look to, at the right, we can take uh, digital diagnostic and kind of have those, the, the units that we've designed and somewhat ghost them a little bit. And we use that as a reference to design the actual smile design. So we, we can get it pretty close to see, to at least give the patient uh, an under, a, a close idea of what they could have as an outcome. But it is important to know that this is just a 2D um, demonstration. So it's, it, it all depends on how the TV are gonna be actually prepped. So this is something that's an add-on if, if, if you're interested in it. Um, I'm going to touch a little bit on our all x prepped as well. This has been something that's been really fun um, that we've launched in the past. We probably launched this about mm, six months after our monolithic design, and we're seeing a lot of growth with it, um, a lot so, more so in the European markets, but um, it's been uh, yeah a great thing that we've been working with. So we have a couple different options here. Um, you'll submit the case. And we will design, basically you, you set it up just the exact same way as a monolithic um, all in X hybrid. So if it's over tie bases, then you would just select them as crowns with gingiva. And then if it's an implant kit and system, you would wanna make sure that's set up as screw retained crowns um, with uh, your implant kit and your system selected for that. Then one thing you'll notice here is we, we actually have our uh, a library that we use for our preps for Trilore. So if you're gonna be milling these out of Trilore, then just let us know when you submit this because that's what we're gonna be, we'll use the Trilore library for this part. So as I mentioned before, as long as it's set up as a regular uh, monolithic crown and bridge, we have that library already in there. So we don't have to individually prep, uh, place preps for this. There is a couple different styles of how you can how you can approach this, but we've mastered um, this technique and it's been working really well. And we have a lot of users that, that go this route. So this is a two-step process. So you'll you'll basically receive um, this first design back. And it's important for us to have this verified wax up so that we can know exactly where to put the, the prep placement, the margins, things like that. And then once we send that back to you and you verify it and everything looks good, um, you simply just copy and append that to the original design, and then you will resubmit it as crowns for us to, to do the final. Um, if this is something you wanna take on yourself for the final crowns, obviously you could do the same, and just set it up as, uh, most of the time I see people going with three, um, three section bridges. So they'll do a posterior bridge, anterior bridge, posterior bridge. Just, it's a lot easier to manage contacts for those of you um, that are the finishers, you guys would understand that. But um, you can do it however you want. If you wanted to design this portion of it in-house, you have the ability to do that. Or if you wanna send it to us, uh, I would highly recommend sending it the crown portion of it for Lucid Design, just because then you'll have that you know, expertise to, to give the crowns a little bit more detail as it relates to that. Um, and then one thing that's pretty awesome that we have also is we have a Docker approval app for our all on X design. So, um, you simply will get a link and an access token that you can send to your doctor. And they'll be able to um, come on here and see basically everything that's related to the case. So your screenshot images, we also include a short uh, video clip of, the, of a 3D preview just to give you a good you know, reference of that. And then they can also view the STL files in here. And then you'll notice up at the top left, we have the full contour icon, but you can, or logo, you can actually put your own logo in there. So it looks like it's coming directly from you. So it's something that's an added feature we have on there. Um, again, you can see we have various different screenshots that we provide for each case. And these are always provided on all cases. 
So not only do we have our evaluation process in here, but also um, different views of the design. And like I mentioned, the, the STL viewer. And then from here, if there's any changes that need to be made or if it's being approved, um, that can simply be adjusted here. And if uh, one thing that's important to know as well is with uh, our LNX, our Lucid, all of our cases, anything that needs to be redesigned is free. It's a free redesign unless we're talking about hybrids. If you have to make a major bite adjustment, of course, that's going to be different. Or if you know something completely changes with the implant system. But if there's something you don't like about the case, we'll take care of you. We'll make sure we um, redesign that for you and get it exactly how you want it. And the redesign is free. So it's an all-inclusive fee per arch. Um, it's 199 is our is our rate for our retail for both of these offerings. And then for the all on X um, prepped, it's, it would be an additional $9 per unit for retail for um, the Lucid units. So it, it doesn't matter how many units it is for the all on X monolithic, it's just a per arch fee. Um, you, you Obviously you get the all on X and Lucid design team and then all the anterior Lucid codes. And then again, as far as the number of implants, that doesn't matter, it's, it's a flat rate of 199. And the video summary with the Docker approval app comes with that as well. All right, guys, so I think we still have a little bit more time. So we're gonna, we're gonna answer some questions. Um, and yeah, there's, please feel free to reach in. Uh, Michelle, I'm sure we probably already have a pretty good amount of, of questions coming in. So yeah, don't hesitate to yeah, I've been answering them on the go. The The webinar will be recorded. We're going to send out the recording after the fact. We'll post it on our YouTube channel. If you guys scan the QR code in the middle, you're going to get 50% off your first Lucid or All in X order. So if you scan that, it just automatically creates the email. So all you have to do is hit send and it'll go to our support team and we can get you guys all set up with half off. Um, I also wanted to give you guys a little bit of um, confidence in the Lucid and All in X offering. As I mentioned, Cole is really behind the scenes, like diving deep on customer feedback and quality and training our designers. And we have some really great reporting tools. So I was just kind of peeking at our quality when it comes to Lucid design um, for all of October and for November. And from all the cases that we designed for Lucid, we only had a 6% redesign rate. Um, so that means, you know, 94% of the cases the labs were able to come in and download them and make them the next day and not have to do any redesign, which is just so great. And even of that percentage, only 2% um, was marked as like they were unhappy with something. So we all know sometimes you just want to redesign and it's not necessarily something's wrong with the design. It's just, you want a small tweak here or there and you don't have time to do it yourself. So Cole has done a great job training our designers and also the design guide codes really guide them as to what you guys are looking for. So just some, um, encouraging news there that you guys can be confident in the quality that we can deliver for your labs, that you're happy, your doctors are happy, and more importantly, you can launch or offer a really successful advanced aesthetic um, indications that provides great return on investment for you at the lab. And um, like I said, we just want to be an extension uh, of you guys there and help you be the best that you can be. So if you have any questions, I realize that the chat is turned off. So sorry about that, but pop into the Q&A, which is um, right next to the chat down on the bottom and type in any questions that you might have or comments, feedback, anything. Um, one other thing I, I wanted to quickly mention to, to, to Michelle's point, as far as uh, redesigns go. So on our platform, we, we have a, a feedback feature. So any case that goes into redesign is going to populate a specific category based on whatever the redesign is. So let's say you had a case that you weren't happy with um, the contacts, for example. Well, when you actually put it into redesign, or when you give us feedback in general and you select that, that there was an issue with contacts, we actually have a tracking uh, mechanism that all of those cases go to um, Power BI system where we track everything. So we know the designer that designed the case, we know um, how many units the case was, we can track all of that information. But more importantly, we have actually built courses for each one of those feedback reasons. So that designer would have to go into a specific um, feedback course related to contacts. So it's it's a constant um, 
way for us to to kind of keep our our designers up to speed on knowing and understanding the things that they need to work on to make improvements so anytime you guys give us feedback we highly highly appreciate it so make sure you you give us that as much as possible yes it doesn't go into the abyss we look at yes. it each and every day cole does deep dives every month we do training um, and actually we even give rewards too so you can give positive feedback on a case and give a thumbs up and uh, we do a drawing once a month for our designers so whoever gets the most positive feedback gets a little reward and it's just a way to encourage the designers that you know yes there's of course redesigns but there's also customers who are really happy and and we love to give them that feedback as well um christopher asks what is the turnaround time from case submission to design approval example a single unit posterior with an eight unit veneer case or so, and an eight unit sorry read that wrong and an eight unit veneer case so any case outside of lucid or all on x is going to be next day by seven is when you so if you were to submit it right now you would have it next morning by 7 a.m um for lucid and all on x we do ask for a 24-hour turnaround time but i would say most of the time you're going to have that case ready for you by tomorrow um, and the reason why we ask for a 24 hour turnaround time is because obviously a lot of times it takes us a little bit more time to evaluate the case because we, we, we slow down a little bit and make sure, you know, during that evaluation process, if there's any problems, we reach out to you. But um, most of the time you will get that by next morning, but it is a 24 hour turnaround in general. Perfect. Any other last minute questions? Again, thank you guys for spending your afternoon with us. We hope it was informative. Cole and myself are both here. Um, you can reach out anytime. We're happy to just, if you want to pick Cole's brain or ask questions, or we can get on your computer and walk you through submitting your first case um, and all the design guide codes and how those work, we're here to help. All right, I don't see any other questions coming in. So thank you guys. Enjoy your yeah, evening. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.